Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, Chairman, um, I see some uh, colleagues here as well, uh, Councillor Ethan Loftus, um, Senator Raymond Cochran. My apologies if I missed missed anyone. Um, Michael Donovan, <laughs> Councillor Mike Donovan is here too. Um, members of the press, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I want to join uh, with Sean in welcoming you all to the official opening uh, of the multi-sport pitches and pavilion here at the National Sports Campus. Uh, it's truly a multi-sport facility uh, which can accommodate um, four major field sports, uh, Gaelic Games, Hockey, Rugby uh, and Football. Um, and also the facilities are going to be open to sports people at all levels, uh, schools and clubs, underage teams, <coughs> League of Ireland clubs, uh, county squads and also international uh, and development squads, uh, some of whom have been here already. Um, separate to what you see here, which are the all-weather pitches, uh, work will now soon commence, commence on two grass pitches uh, a little bit further away, which will be used um, in tandem with these uh, for the same purpose. Uh, as the Chairman said, the facilities uh, mark the latest major milestone uh, in the development of, um, of facilities here at the National Sports Campus. Uh, they join long-standing facilities that have been here for a long time, uh, such as the National Aquatic Centre, uh, which you can now see up the hill for the first time, and it's very impressive to look at it fr from that angle. And that's here more than 10 years, and actually is um, in the top three or four uh, pay-in attractions in the state um, after the Guinness Storehouse, uh, the zoo, and one other that escapes me. Gives over. Gives over. Okay, so it's pretty much up there um, <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, pay-in attractions. Anyway, um, uh, the FAI have been here on site in but only on their own for uh, a very long time, but um, have neighbours now at long last. Um, and also the Institute of Sport is here too, which provides uh, all sorts of um, uh, training facilities um, and uh, professional advice uh, for Irish elite athletes. Uh, there are new arrivals, uh, Sports HQ, which the Taoiseach opened last year, um, which accommodates uh, over 20 different sporting bodies and their offices. Uh, there's a National Horse Sport Arena, which again opened last year, the modern Pentathlon Centre. Uh, Pentathlon is a sport in which we hope to uh, do very well uh, in the Rio Olympics. Um, the National Diving Training Centre, which is here too, and also for the first time uh, on-site accommodation for athletes. Some of the old gatehouses have been renovated, which means that uh, at least the swimmers initially uh, can stay here overnight and save a huge amount of time uh, in travelling so they can concentrate on their training too. Uh, the, the next ma major milestones, uh, in no particular order, uh, will be the commencement of work on the GAA and FAI training facilities uh, here, um, the extension of the Institute of Sport, to provide a high performance training centre, particularly, particularly for athletes in the run up to Rio, uh, and then the commencement on the, um, uh, on the indoor arena, uh, which really is the missing keystone uh, in Irish sporting infrastructure. Uh, it's a cold country, it rains a lot, as you know, and uh, we need to have proper indoor facilities for athletes so that they don't have to uh, travel abroad uh, to advance their careers. If they choose to, that's one thing, but they certainly shouldn't uh, have to. Um, I'd really like to thank Sean for the kind words he said about me, but I do need to say some kind words about one of my colleagues, uh, and that's um, uh, Minister Brendan Howland, uh, who is the Minister of Public Expenditure, actually came out here, uh, visited the site with Barry O'Brien, and really got it, uh, and got the vision, and the revised vision for this uh, campus. And I think if it wasn't for that visit and his support, it wouldn't have been possible for me to secure the funding. So um, people often talk about... Um, conflicts in the coalition that are very much overblown. Uh, this is a very good example of, of the coalition working well uh, and, uh, and a Labour minister being very much behind this, this project as well as a Fine Gael one. Um, even when all of those uh, things are complete in a few years' time, uh, when the indoor arena is complete, I suppose realistically it'll be 2016-2017 uh, before it is, um, there's still plenty of land here, uh, lots of land here that is unused. Um, and certainly, uh, even though nobody can make any promises at this stage, we're interested in, in exploring uh, things that could be done with that additional land. <coughs> certainly there's room to accommodate uh, more NGBs here in site. Um, there's maybe even room for a training velodrome or something for badminton as well, for cycling uh, badminton. Uh, and also there's the possibility of relocating the uh, sports council here so they don't have to pay uh, rent on their existing offices. Um, as you'll all know, government policy in sport is really about two things. It's about, uh, uh, number one, um, increasing participation in sport among the public for all the reasons that you'll know. Um, and it's also about supporting our high performance athletes uh, so that they can um, wave the Irish flag proudly overseas. And the sports campus is really just one part uh, of that policy. Um, there's three other things. Uh, the other things are getting sport more involved in schools. And I'm very glad that Rory Quinn has now included uh, physical education as an examinable subject uh, in the new junior cycle. 
it'll take a few years before that happens, but it's, it's very much uh, on the cards that decision is made. And I'd really love to see physical education recognised in the Leaving Cert as well uh, as a full subject in the way that art and music and home economics and other, other uh, subjects that mix uh, a talent or a discipline uh, with an academic pursuit um, are as well. Uh, the third part is the Sports Capital Programme, uh, which was cancelled by the last government and was restored by this one. Um, Michael Ring is now currently receiving the applications uh, for the next round of funding. Now, he's a busy man. People follow him into the toilet and everything to <laughs> talk to him about grant applications. Um, it was best to have him busy. <laughs> and um, and uh, I certainly encourage uh, all of the clubs uh, and also the NGBs uh, to make applications uh, for that programme because it isn't just for clubs, it's also for schools uh, and NGBs. And we want to see good applications uh, from lo lots of different quarters. Uh, and finally, the, the fourth thing we tried to do, which has been the hardest thing, and we've only had mixed success really, uh, is to protect the budget for sport. And as you know, budgets in everything uh, have been cut back in recent years. Um, and we've done our best to protect that. Uh, this year, the overall sports budget will increase uh, for the first time since 2008, uh, a big increase in the capital side. There is a cut on the current side uh, to the sports council of about two or three uh, percent. But we'd be very much of the view that uh, those savings should be achieved through efficiencies, through payroll, uh, and through Haddington Road type um, arrangements rather than uh, cutting back uh, on programmes which uh, none of us want to do and in that context particular programmes have been protected uh, such as Paralympics, such as women in sport uh, and very much as well the smaller NGBs who maybe don't have the access uh, to sponsorship or corporate funding as others do. So really to wrap up I just want to um, uh, end with a few words of thanks uh, and really sincere appreciation uh, to the contractors, uh, McAvoy's and Adson Construction uh, to the consulting engineers, uh, Tobins, um, to the four NGBs who have been developing facilities here and have been part of the, the partnership program uh, where the campus partners with, with NGBs to uh, develop facilities, uh, the FAI, the GAA, the IRFU and the Irish Hockey Association, um, to the schools and squads who have helped us to showcase the facility here today, uh, St. Pat's Athletic, um, the Ladies Rugby Sevens, uh, the, the, the various schools uh, and others. Um, and I'd also like to echo um, Sean's words of appreciation for Barry O'Brien. I, I don't think he's actually here today. He is, oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good seeing. <laughs> um, and I, th I think one of the best things about Barry uh, over the couple of years that I've been in office uh, is just that, that that amazing enthusiasm he's had for the sports campus. Uh, it was always annoying on occasion, but it was never. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was it was never it was never ever insincere. Uh, and he had a real grow and a real love for this project. Um, and I think he made a lot of people believe in it, uh, who maybe wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and most of all, I want to offer my thanks to uh, the, the board of the campus, uh, the staff and the management uh, for their belief in the project uh, from the start, um, when there was uh, a somewhat different vision, uh, through the rocky roads when, or the rocky years when it was very unclear what was happening at all here, uh, to days like this, um, which I think make it all worthwhile. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoy um, touring the facilities. Thank you.